So you guys were one. I'm hearing all you guys. You guys want the theme song short, so here we go. This girl reviews movies, games, and books. Sometimes she plays them. So does that. And when she does it with the cat, does that make her crazy? Does that make her crazy? Probably. <laughs> so, it's shorter. There you go. <laughs> Crazy Cat Lady or Martha Butler does not own the, any trailers or pictures. I use them under fair use. Katie Snow for edge and entertainment purpose. Blade, it's like it's all he did. Well, those years ago. See? No, I don't want to do any more of it. Stupid. All right, hi everyone, Martha here. So they did cover practice. This at a different point. <laughs> Trying to remember how they got in the world. I'm pretty sure they got two of them where I use in an elevator. But, so, this is for episode 7 of Percy Jackson. And man, this one is a lot better than the last episode. I don't know what the hell wrong was with the last episode. But, they just couldn't do the casino scene properly. <laughs> um... I don't think anybody really liked it. I was being trying to be lately, but by still getting trying to give it a good score because there's still some good parts. Because I did not notice because I watched the secondly twice. I watched the episode twice now. Um, apparently Bianca and um, Nico are there. I didn't think they, they didn't. Apparently in the background when um, Grover is talking to um, the other Seder, um. You can hear some. You can hear Nico yell for his sister, say Bianca. But and then when they go to the VR section, which Willie really wish they would have really arcade sections for the kids, not VRs. Still, um, just you see um, a little. You see a girl shoot an arrow, and that's supposed to be Bianca, and the kid right next to her is supposed to be Nico. So they did put them in there, and just have to pay attention. And um, put two and two together. So, so there is kids there. Anyway, um, now for talking about this episode. So we see Procrastus, which was, which is technically um, Percy's brother, but from a different time period, who in Greek mythology tortured people, but in this, and that he actually um, sells. Um, beds, but I really wish they would, he did, first he did figure it out that it was him, but kind of wish they would let us figure out who it is for people who have not read the book. But once he, like, walked into the mattress store, I, like, knew right away, oh, yay, they are gonna do this part! Um, so, and, after, the way they trick him in order to letting them go by is that Annabeth gets her hat, goes in there with her hat on and not, and Procrastus doesn't know she's there. And when he like tells her to, when Percy tells him to push him into the waterbed, which is ironic, that waterbed kills the sudden Poseidon. <laughs> so, yeah. And they end up going for that way to the other world. And Grover comes in like, is it over yet? <laughs> so, and then they open the door and Grover says, it smells like rotten milk. It's the underworld. It's supposed to smell. <laughs> so, they go in there and then they grab a ball to squeeze. And remember that ball comes back later for who's also in the other world. And then they find, they bump into... Charon, and Charon is the boatman that takes you to the underworld when you're in the underworld. Like it, it's the one that take. He's the one that um, provides passage to the dead, but you have to pay him. That's why. Um, and um, in the low well, like when they die, back in the olden days, they put coins on top of their eyes so they would have a way to um, pay Charon. So. Do you ever wonder why they're, they put coins on their eyes when people die? And you see that sometimes in movies. That's why. Um, so, 
and Charon has a whistle, and like you can pick, and first he says you can after he gets through all the line of the, the dead people. He like you can get by yourself a new whistle. It's a dog whistle. He's whistling for Cerberus, and Cerberus is doing his job here. He's not being a bad dog, Grover. He's doing his job. He's supposed to keep people alive out of the underworld. You're alive. <laughs> So, it's okay if he ate you. <laughs> so, the way they deal with Cerberus, who is fine. It doesn't really matter what type of dog he is, as long as he's not a chihuahua. He's supposed to be giant. <laughs> um, but they made him a Rottweiler with three heads. And and Annabeth gets on top of him, like a, on one of, by one of the necks, and scratches it. And it calms all three of them, and it eats one of the heads eats Grover. And um, Grover has to get out. Grover like, calls the bad dog for eating him, but he's not a bad dog. <laughs> he's not. And then um, Grover uses um, Hermes' shoot to get um, him and Percy off, like on top of a hill. And Annabeth. And then then they it jumps up to try to get them. And and then the Beth grabs the hill of it, grabs the grab the hill, and gets on top. Then she throws the ball that Grover used to calm himself from the from having to deal with the fact that they have to go into a place that smells, <laughs> and uses it to throw to fetch to get the dog to fetch. Even though it's a giant dog and three headed, it still is a dog. <laughs> They still like things that dogs do. So, they go to on the place um, where you have where you regret stuff when there's people who are basically turning into treat like like root down there because of all many regrets they have. And I'm guess and Annabeth ends up having a regret. So, I'm guessing what she regrets is the fact that she can. They don't really say what she regrets, but one of the things I can guess is that she was not able to save Dahlia from turning into a tree. So, that sounds good. That sounds very reasonable for a thing for her to regret. And then they hear a service coming. And so, Annabeth has to leave because um, she can't get off. Cause she can't cut the tree because it doesn't work like that. And so, Perseus and... um. Grover has to leave Annabeth behind. And now, when they get to this part, um, there's like a big um, hole in the ground, and a like, and it pulls um, Perseus down. Try to pull Perseus, and he has to use a sword to like plate it. And um, Grover ends up losing the shoes that Luke gave them, and. When then they hear something feel hard, and they find out they had the bolt, so they find out that Ares tricked them because he knows this bag Aram Ares gave him, and so he tricked them so he can give the bolt to um, Hades, and so they go to, they end up leaving that that part of the underworld, and then they go to um, Hades um. Palace, they like we tell we have to let Zeus wait because now we have the ball. We can go and do what we want. We have we still have to save Perseus' mom and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, well, like, this whole entire time this is going on, um, we have a little flashback, um, going back and forth about um, Perseus going to the school when he's about eight years old that he was in that he has been expelled by, um, in the first episode and. He keeps on being a difficult child because he doesn't want to go to a private school. Who could blame him? And uh, he, his mom is having a hard time learn, dealing with the fact that he doesn't want to go. And she thinks that she might have to take him to the camp. So she goes and calls her, calls Poseidon, so we get to see Poseidon. And him and, and they have like a little talk about what to do with Perseus. Because he just saw, um, Flapjack. 
because it's Hassy Flapjack, because Blackjack's black. So, they say wing horse, but if you read the books, we know it's Flapjack, because Blackjack's his horse. So, and Blackjack is not supposed to show, like, the next book, but it's fine. And, they, um, she ends up having to, like, talk to him. And I like the fact that he comes in, like, a storm. It, that's why he gets to meet his, his, um, meet, uh, Sally. And she tells, he asks her, she, um, Sally asks um, Poseidon, do you want to see your son? Do you want to see Hadiam? But she says, when he's ready. But at first she was going to take him to the camp, but when he realizes that she doesn't want them to end up like, want Perseus to end up like his family. And the way he does that to make sure he's not at the camp. Because you, so yeah. So that's how this happens when he's like eight years old. It doesn't really tell us, but we can tell by the by the size of the kid, who's a different the different actor. And when they go talk to um um Hades, now we're back to um the present. Hades like tells them, I don't want. I'm not working with Ares like we had, like we thought for. What we've been thinking that that he's working with Ares. This is one a few times in this world. With Hades is not a bad guy as he's not. He's rarely in any story and um. Like, only time I think he's really a bad guy is with, um... Yeah, two times he's a bad guy is when he takes, um... Uh... His wife. Um... And when he ta when And when he, um... Won't let, um... When he takes Persephone and when he will not Odysseus has his wife. So those are the times I would say that he's a bad guy, but usually he does not a bad guy. Like he lets Hercules have take Cerberus up to top. So I'm gonna do one of his um his one of his um lessons or that he has to do. The Hercules the movie is not exactly the best portrayal of him, but it's a good, it's still, they still do Hades good, because he's still making funny. <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted to, like, say that usually he's not a bad guy. In every, most movies, they do make him a bad guy, but this is one of the rare moments, since um, Rick Reinder knows his Greek mythology, that Hades is not a bad god. Just because he rolls over the underworld does not make him a bad god. He's not the devil. So... Um, he just really, what he wants from, um, Perry, Perdy, Perseus, is his helm. His helm of darkness, or his helm of invisibility, because they figured out how they get the bolts, because, um, they used the um, helm of invisibility to grab the bolts so nobody would see them. So that's what he figured out, and then his helm's been missing for, so yeah. And so he wants Perseus to give it to him. I mean, I think he might already have him because it's invisible, so he does not notice that he have it. They don't like. I just like to throw that out there. And so this is when Perseus figures out it's Kronos, since um, Ares slipped up and mentioned his um, gra his grandpa about when they, he said that his aunt and uncles were eaten. So he kind of accidentally let it, let that slip. So, he put two and two together, and he's the only other person, only other, um, uh, one who would want revenge against his own, against his own kids for, um, beating him up and tearing, tearing him a thousand pieces and throwing him a Tartarus. And so, since, um, Hades found that out, he found out, he said, okay, fine, give me the boat so I can defend against my father, basically. And, and I'll let... Or extra sanctuary, and I'll let you, Grover, and your mom go. And so I'm gonna def 
take care of my dad. And I, the reason why he doesn't want to go up to the Mount Olympus because he doesn't get along with his family. Because um, he doesn't like they always fight amongst each other. And he likes to mostly try to stay out of it. And I'm happy that... Um, that Persephone is not there because she's not supposed to be there because it's the middle of the summer. If you know Greek mythology, she's supposed to be with her mom. <laughs> so, so she's not there. So yeah, yay! They did that good. <laughs> um, um. So after that, they get they go and go and get the bolt, and then they're gonna fight uh, Ares, and that's gonna be the next episode. So they kind of did some stuff out of order, but it's fine. Um. At least they did show some things, maybe a little bit out of order of the book, but I'm okay with it. And I'm happy that's here. So, I think that everything, I, the underworld looks scary and everything looked fine. I think this one was a lot better than the last one. I'm definitely going to probably going to give this one like a 10 out of 10. I don't really see anything wrong with it. I think everything was fine. So, and they did add a little bit that was not in the book. So... Yeah, I can't wait for next episode of next week. Can you guys? So that's basically it. Like, favorite, and subscribe. And bye bye. Hopefully, I got I said everything right. Everybody's name right because these names are not easy to say. Bye bye.